Following a South Korean artillery exercise in disputed waters along the island of Yonpyeong on November 23, 2010, North Korea opened an artillery bombardment on its neighbors. The attackers fired no less than 170 artillery shells and rockets directed at both military and civilian targets, causing widespread damage across the island. However, the South Koreans were prepared. Going back to the 1980s, they had crafted a weapon system capable of standing its ground against their irascible and unpredictable siblings. The K-9 Thunder self-propelled howitzer was developed as a domestic enterprise born of local technology and innovation, and as the enemy struck, it was the right time to prove itself. Domestic Perks As the hostilities between North and South Korea spiked again in the fall of 1983, Soviet jets shot down a Korean airliner, igniting a U.S.-Soviet crisis that had the world hanging by a thread. Roughly a month later, much of the South Korean cabinet was wiped out in a terrorist bombing in Rangoon, Burma, and the president barely survived. In the aftermath, both sides went on high alert. However, many diplomats assured that tensions between the North and South had been rising for months. In an unprecedented move, the communist state called for a three-way talk among its southern neighbors and the United States, stating in a letter, quote, The present situation is strained so extremely that an accidental trifling incident might trigger off a war at any minute. Such a war would inevitably expand into a nuclear war. It was around this time that the Republic of Korea Armed Forces realized that they needed a new artillery system to contest their enemy's equipment. Compared to the North's M1978 Koksan, the American-made M107s and K55s had relatively short firing ranges. Besides, they were highly outnumbered by the communist artillery. Based on the experience gained by license producing the K55, and inspired by the success of their domestic KH-178 105mm and KH-175 155mm towed howitzers, the Ministry of Defense ordered the development of a new system with a more extended range, faster rate, and higher mobility. The K-9 Thunder is born. In 1989, the project to develop a more efficient system began, led by the Agency for Defense Development and then Samsung Aerospace Industries, currently Hawa Defense. Designed to provide effective and deep fire support in all kinds of theaters, the K9 Thunder Howitzer was built on a high-mobility platform. The vehicle is made of all-welded steel armor protection material and its sturdy construction offers protection for both the crew and the onboard equipment against 155mm shell fragments, 14.5mm armor-piercing shells, and anti-personnel mines. In addition, the vehicle includes an air purification system, as well as crew gas masks for nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. Powered by an MTU-MT881-KA500 eight-cylinder water-cooled diesel engine, Coupled to the Allison ATDX 1100-5A3 transmission, the K9 Thunder has an output of 1,000 horsepower and a power-to-weight ratio of 21.8 horsepower per ton. Moreover, it can maneuver and traverse across diverse terrains, from the unsteady desert sand to the misleading snowy plains. In the manufacturer's words, quote, Developed with our own technology, the K9 Thunder is the world's most advanced self-propelled howitzer. Capabilities The mobile howitzer is supplemented by the K-10, an automatic ammunition resupply vehicle built on the K-9 platform that can follow the main artillery battery. The resupply vehicle can automatically transfer 12 rounds through a conveyor belt within a minute, protecting the crew from unnecessary exposure. Plus, each auxiliary vehicle can support a pair of K-9 guns carrying up to 104 rounds of ammunition. Its main 155mm 52 caliber gun has a burst rate of 3 rounds per 15 seconds, 
while its maximum rate reaches six to eight rounds a minute for three minutes. As for the sustained rate of fire, it can handle two to three rounds a minute for one hour and is designed to meet the tactical concept of shoot and scoot. The K9's projectiles are standard M107 high explosive mines and they have a maximum range of 18 kilometers. Still, the full range when firing the HE rocket assisted projectile with unit charge of five zones is 30 kilometers. And when it comes to the K307 projectile with a modular charge of six zones, the gun can fire at over 40 kilometers. The platform includes an automatic loading system that places the projectiles on the ammunition tray. And within 30 seconds at standout position, or 60 seconds during movement, the gun is ready to fire. Then after firing, the vehicle can quickly move away from its last position in anticipation of retaliation. Enhancements The K9A1 is an improved variant of the classic model, but enhanced to better operate automatic fire control units at night, as it is fitted with upgraded night vision periscopes and auxiliary power units. The K9A1 also features an automated fire control system for added efficiency. The variant boasts increased shooting range, high velocity firing, and excellent maneuverability, with quick day and night displacement for firing support and direct engagement. Moreover, it can precisely concentrate its firepower on selected targets. Nevertheless, a new variant is currently under development. The K9A2 will be a more advanced model custom made for the UK's mobile fire platform program and aimed at upgrading the British Army's artillery capabilities. The proposal will reportedly feature mine protection kits, an unmanned turret, and composite rubber tracks. Fragile Peace On November 23, 2010, the North Koreans launched a surprise artillery bombardment on their southern neighbors in Yongpyong. As such, the thunder was abruptly called into action for the first time, supporting the 7th Artillery Company of the Republic of Korea Marine Corps. From mid-2010 onwards, the Marines assigned to the island post were forced to use ANTPQ-37 radar to counteract the increasing threats from the communist side. Despite the measure, the North Korean coastline is too long and well fortified, rendering the number of radar units insufficient. Still, every vehicle is armed with 20 shells of high explosives, combined with flares to respond swiftly. Fortunately, four howitzers were conducting a scheduled firing exercise before the attack, and two of them remained in the fortified position. Still, one of the vehicles misfired a faulty charge, and the shell got stuck in the barrel. Once the improvised attack was over, the crew opened the hatches and dismounted, waiting for the platform to be fixed. Three of the four howitzers deployed in the area were damaged after the initial surprise attack. Meanwhile, the attack disabled the base's main power station, and the radar was shut down, albeit temporarily. The Marines were then forced to relocate to a fortified position. Only then could the South Koreans respond with three thunders, including a damaged unit. However, they were unable to locate the enemy artillery positions and had to target pre-designated positions at Mudo. The defenders spotted the North Korean positions at Kemori until the radar was reactivated and a second wave began. Fortunately for the South Koreans, a fourth K-9 joined the fight after it was set to manual firing mode. Afterward, the tensions in the peninsula only escalated as the world's political and economic scenes were shaken. As former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Bill Richardson described it, it was, quote, the most serious crisis on the Korean Peninsula since the 1953 armistice, which ended the Korean War. But evidently, after nearly eight decades, the conflict is far from over. Thank you for watching our video please hit the thumbs up button. And if you like world history and military exploits, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned for much more true action-inspired content.